Everyone, you're watching Shasta's Journey, and I'm your host, Shasta Garcia. This show is all about my path to purpose, and along the way, I will meet so many incredible people with stories that could heal, teach, or inspire one of you out there, much like the guest that I have today, who is Luana, and she is a former Fox 40 reporter, and she has an incredible story on how her faith has impacted her profession and what she does, and I think it's really incredible. Well, thank you so much for having me, Shasta. I'm actually nervous, because now <laughs> I'm the girl in the hot seat being asked all the questions. And you're very good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite nervous myself, too. It's the first episode of the new show, so it's quite different. <laughs> but I first wanted to ask you just, have, do you think that you have found your purpose in life? My purpose? I think I've, I'm living my purpose. I hope that I am living my purpose. But I don't think I'm done, whatever <laughs> that purpose is. You know, uh, I, you mentioned I was an anchor reporter for mm -hmm. Fox 40. Prior to that, I was working in Missouri as a reporter and an anchor. I did the morning show there. And before that, I was in Bakersfield. So there wow. is a long list of things uh, that I've done, and that's where my career goes. Um, so, so many things led up to me becoming uh, an anchor and a reporter. And one of the things you touched on was faith. Mm -hmm. um, I always tell people my faith or their faith is what will get you to where it is that you want to be. So whatever that is for you, whatever that means, mm -hmm. your faith shouldn't be the obstacle to your dreams or to your goals. So, Yeah, and so it's definitely helped you. Has there been any challenges or struggles with your faith, though, as far as, you know, your profession that you do? And has there been any challenges for that? You know, um, there haven't been any you know, blatant in my face type of challenges. The only challenge has really been, you know, being careful. You can't always talk about certain things, especially if you're going to be on a network, uh, mm -hmm. you know, or any type of network, not counting out Fox, ABC, any of them. Uh, you have to be careful. But my faith really hasn't been an obstacle, again, like I said, to getting where it is that I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And finding your purpose, this is such a big topic that you touch on. It's like, oh my gosh, where do I go with this? <laughs> I, there's so many different avenues. You know, so many times we spend our entire lives trying to figure out what exactly is my purpose in life. Or who you are or as a person. who are you? Yeah. And you want to be on this earth making sure that you do exactly what it is you were put on this earth to do, right? What you don't want to do. die and say, oh my gosh, I did everything that I hated or mm -hmm. I, did I do what I was supposed to do? I think you find your purpose when you take a step back, mm -hmm. you relax you don't chase after what it is that you're looking for, but you allow, you allow life to take over. You allow God, your spirit, the spirit that's inside of you to kind of lead, guide, and direct where it is that you're going. And the answers will come to you in service, mm -hmm. in service. Exactly. I feel like we were made by a perfect creator. So that means that perfection is in us as well. These hands were meant to do something. Your hands were meant to do something. Mm -hmm. We all have a purpose. We all have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And when you're giving, when you're doing for others, when you're living out what it is that God did for us, you will find what it is. The, I feel like God will just open up and hand you what it is your dream is, what, what path you're supposed to go in. All the answers that you've been asked, all the questions that you've been asking, the answers will come to you. Mm -hmm. And how would you describe your faith to the viewers and just how you're living it out? My faith, I... You know, every morning, I, I don't do this every morning, but I should. <laughs> I certainly should. Uh, meditation, staying calm. Shouldn't we all? <laughs> yes. I think meditation is a, a big part of success. Of any, if you're a mom, a stay-at-home mom, let's say you don't even believe in God. You don't believe, uh, you're not a Christian, you're not a Muslim, you're not, whatever your faith is or isn't, meditation needs to be the key to the beginning of your day. You need to stay centered. You need to get in touch. I do that more at night. <laughs> um, you know, what, whatever time you can find, I say the morning because it's the beginning and it's the start of your day. I mean, what better time mm -hmm. while everyone else is sleeping to be alone, uh, talk to yourself, talk with, the, you know, your inner spirit and get in touch with that. And then allow that to lead God and direct the rest of your day. You know, that's when our thoughts are the freshest. That's when everything kind of comes to us. So... When you say, you know, you talk about faith and, and how it mm -hmm. plays a role in my life, definitely prayer. Prayer, I think, um, it keeps you centered. It keeps you grounded. 
And so many people kind of get lost in mm -hmm. the noise, I call it, of yes. life. The noise. <laughs> the, the worldly things. The wor and anything. Mm -hmm. It could be your kids yelling and screaming at you. It could be your husband <laughs> saying things that, you know, you just don't want to hear. <laughs> uh, it could be your job. Your job can be beyond demanding. Mm -hmm. And we all lose a little bit of that inspiration that we want to keep. The encouragement. Mm -hmm. Being inspired is something that you need to be on a daily basis basis. You need to feel it. And when you're not inspired, that's your intuition. That's God, I think, <laughs> telling you, hey, um, you know, you, you need to get back. You need to get focused again because you want to be inspired. Whatever it is you're doing, mm -hmm. whatever you're putting your hands in, if you're not passionate about it, it's going to be crap. I'm sorry to say it, but it, it's not going to look good. It's not going to sound good. And you're not going to be happy with the finished product. Mm -hmm. So... I know you have all these kind of questions, and I'll just keep running. <laughs> no, it's okay. I just love how the conversation just flows how it's supposed to flow. And I wanted to touch base on a little bit how we met, because it wasn't just I called up Fox 40 and was like, hey, can I talk to you? Well, no, that didn't happen. We Actually, our paths did cross, and it crossed in a very interesting way. Probably not the best place, but it definitely happened for a reason. And we actually met at my uncle's candlelight vigil. You probably have heard the story. In December 2013, my uncle went missing and it was a huge search and rescue, and he was found on the eighth day deceased in a car accident. And a week or so after, we had a candlelight vigil for him around Christmas time, and I had the pleasure of being interviewed by Luana, and she opened up a light that I've never seen in reporters before, and Aww. I had this huge stereotype because I was dealing with, with reporters for weeks with it, and she finally interviewed me at the candlelight vigil, and I had the utmost respect for Aww. reporters and their profession, and Luana, and Fox 40, and oh, it, no, seriously, I'm, and we, we exchanged numbers, and we kept in contact from there, and she's sitting right here with me, and I'm, I'm really blessed for that, and I'm glad that our paths did cross. I'm blessed to be here on the show. You know, you are someone who, who touched my heart. You had this big smile on your face, even, even now listening to you when you talked mm -hmm. about losing your uncle. Uh, that's not easy. I lost my uncle at a very young age, too, mm -hmm. and you're able to say that without crying. Yeah. You know, it, it just shows your strength and your passion about doing the show. And mm -hmm. I saw that in you when we when we interviewed, and you were just this <laughs> this dynamic young woman who told me that she was a journalist. And you know, you hear all kinds of things from young people, and I, I love it when I hear that when I hear mm -hmm. the excitement in someone's voice. But I really meant uh, I felt it when you said it. I knew you meant it. So uh, we yeah we exchanged numbers, and here we are <laughs> a couple of years later. Yeah. I mean, this is, it's pretty exciting. You're yeah. out now asking me the questions, and hey. I'm, you know, yeah, like you said, it wasn't the perfect setting, but, um, you know, the, some of the most greatest things happen in imperfect moments. Mm -hmm. And this is what I wanted the show to all be about, is the people that, you know, do cross my path, and the people that I get to meet who have amazing stories that could teach, heal, or inspire somebody out there, and I know your story well, because we have so much more we have to talk about. <laughs> no, but I'm serious. You have gone through trials and tribulations, I'm sure of it, and your faith has got you to where you are now, and that's what I really want to focus on with the show, is that it doesn't matter who you are, or what race you are, or what you believe in, but you have a purpose, and your story is powerful. It truly is. It has power. And I mean, it doesn't matter what you've been through, but those things will teach you or inspire somebody else. Absolutely. And your story is one of them. Um, it, you're right. Uh, starting when I was in high school, I was a writer. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know how I came to doing what it is okay, that I'm doing so high now. School writing. Started in high <laughs> school. I wrote for my high school paper. And I just realized that through writing, I was like, hey, you know, I'm okay at this. Mm -hmm. um, you can be really powerful with, with words. Words, <laughs> words you know, Seriously. you could punch someone and bruises go away. <laughs> <laughs> but words can really leave an impact. And I mm -hmm. wanted to leave an impact in a positive way. You know, everything that you were doing in life, I think that if it's positive, it's just going to happen. It'll flow. It'll come to you. You know, nobody mm -hmm. in my town was doing <laughs> what I uh, accomplished or what I set out to do. I had never, I had no one to model after. So... I decided at some point, I think I was driving to school, I was a student at Solano College, and I said, you know, what is, what is it that I really want to do? I'm going to have to figure this out at some point in life. And I said, well, I, I know that I like to write, and I know that I like to tell stories uh, with my voice. There was something about my voice that I enjoyed, you know, putting the emphasis where mm -hmm. I wanted it to be, you know, 
scaling back where I wanted to scale back and sharing the story the way I wanted it to be told. So I said, oh, okay, I'll be a TV journalist. And it was just in that moment in my car, riding to school, <laughs> I that I, I made the decision. You know, yeah. it's, it's one of those aha moments, uh -huh. I call it. <laughs> and I headed to school, and from that moment on, I decided, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. How can you help me get there? And it wasn't an easy path, and it wasn't a hard path. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of choices. Nothing in life is hard. You just have to make some certain choices. Nothing will be hard. If mm -hmm. it's what you really want to do, if it's what you're passionate about, and again, don't do anything unless you have passion, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So from there, um, let's see, where did it go? When I went to UCLA. I was a political science major. I didn't even study communications. <laughs> But I knew I was going to be a journalist, and I mm. felt like, you know, this is going to help me more. I'm when doing I, psychology, and so that should help me, right? <laughs> I say, do whatever you love. It absolutely uh -huh. will help you. Uh, being more diverse, mm -hmm. I knew that I would learn the job on the job, talking in front of a camera, how to interview people. That would come to me. So I was a little bit behind the curb when it mm -hmm. came to everyone else in my very first job. I didn't even know how to get the job. <laughs> so how did it happen? Uh, I was walking around the UCLA campus and I happened to walk past the career center hmm. and I decided well, I'll go in there let's see what's going on and they happened to have a little ceremony that was or not a ceremony but a um, like a class a class okay. that was about you know going to use uh, to Washington DC and the school was going to help you pay for it there was some kind of a program and I said oh how do I do this and they said well you find the internship and if you have the right grades uh, we'll give mm -hmm. you a little scholarship, and there's kind of a little bit of a support network there. So I said, okay. I sent my application out to all these local channels and CNN. And oh, guess wow. who I heard back from? Wow. <laughs> Not the local channels. <laughs> and I thought, oh, no, maybe I you need to. You just give me chills for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you have those moments, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I need to rethink this, but uh, I, I heard back from CNN Espanol wow. in Washington, D.C., and that was my introduction, my very first time walking into a studio That's amazing. with you know the best of the best. And my gosh, I learned, I sucked up, and I absorbed as much as I could for as long as I could. And it, it mm -hmm. was just beginning. It was only just starting. From there, I went back to L.A., I did a couple more internships. I'd pay mm -hmm. people under the table, help me put together a reel, videotape me here, videotape me there. I put something together and I started submitting to hundreds of places for my first job. It took me a year and um, a very long time. Perfect timing. A though. lot of rejections. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then finally, somebody said yes to me. And, and even how I met my first boss mm -hmm. was me, you know. Uh, meeting people, meeting people, meeting people, shaking their hands, saying, hey, can you help me? How can you help me get to where uh, this is what I want to do? Can you help me get there? Mm -hmm. And finally, someone sat me down and said, well, you look like you have the passion and the desire and the drive to do this. I'm going to introduce you to so-and-so. Who may introduce me to so-and-so? You introduced me to so-and-so. And the door opened up. Mm -hmm. My first job was in Bakersfield. I drove to the final interview of three. <laughs> I was moving out of my apartment, that's how unexpected it was, with all my stuff in my little Honda Civic with no air conditioning <laughs> in LA going to Bakersfield. And I said, okay, well, if I don't get the job, I'm going to continue driving north, go home yeah. to mom and dad's, stay there for a little bit. Uh, but I got the job. That's and then amazing. That's where it all started. Yeah. And so you did say that you went through rejects, rejections and things like that. Yeah. And so, you know, what kept you going? What kept you passionate? What kept you encouraged throughout that process and throughout that journey? I think it was just the drive. If you know that you're destined to do something, if you know deep down inside, hey, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, you just, you don't give up. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have any children, fortunately. I didn't have a family that I had to really think about. And I know a lot of people do uh, face that when they're trying mm -hmm. to decide, even in their later years of their life, you know, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I doing what I really want? Um, I just kept holding on to that dream. I knew that this was mine, and nobody was going to take that away from me. The only person who was going to decide that it wasn't for me was myself and God. Mm -hmm. 
I actually had a quote, you keep talking about purpose, and so there's this quote and it says, purpose is the reason you journey, passion is the fire that lights the way. And I just think that's, that's a really incredible quote because our journey is everything. Life is a journey and you have to have faith to get to your purpose and you have to be passionate about what you're doing or you're doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Obviously, you're not doing your purpose if you're not passionate about it. And you know, not, we all have inspired. gifts, you know, we all have gifts for something that we're, we're meant to be doing. So. Absolutely. And like I said, if, you know, if someone's sitting at home right now wondering, thinking, you know, am I living out my gifts? What can I do? What, what am I supposed to be doing? Like I said, in giving back, you will either figure out what it is. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to know. Don't worry about the outcome. Don't mm -hmm. worry about the, uh, the overall destination, the goal. Just kind of go with the flow of life and you don't have to hustle. You know, even if I would have known then, back when I was in my early 20s, what I know now, I could have saved, my, saved myself a lot of the stress that I caused because mm -hmm. I was stressed out <laughs> for a year looking for a job, you know, and I kept going yes. and going and pushing and you don't even have to push. <laughs> you just have to go. Uh -huh. You know, everybody has a song to sing. And as long as you don't die with that song still inside of you, you play your song. Everyone's song is going to be different. You just have to show up and play. It'll come to you. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, the doors will open up. You're giving right now. You're <laughs> giving back to your community. You're talking to people. You're hoping mm -hmm. that others get inspired. And if what you desire for yourself is less than what you would hope for someone else, then that's when the doors open up. You have to want it more for someone else to be happy, to find their peace, to find their joy, mm -hmm. more so than you want it for yourself. <laughs> and that's when it all just kind of, it comes together. And you know, that brings me to something that I really wanted to discuss. And that is, um, as far as what we're talking about, like basically what got you into, how do you feel you're serving people in your community and the people around you? Because you talked a lot about, you know, serving and, you know, it's for others. You know, your purpose has some other purpose for somebody else. You know, it's going to help somebody else. And so as a reporter and as a former reporter, how would you say that you are serving your community and the people around you? Well, you know, it changes. It changes constantly. Um, when I first started out, my ideal and my goal was I wanted other young girls who looked like me, other other uh, dark-skinned Latina girls, mm -hmm. to have someone that they can look at on the on the TV screen and say, "Oh, well, if she can do it, I can do it." Because it was rare uh, that you saw dark-skinned Latinas mm -hmm. um, in media, it, you know, as anchors, as reporters. They, they were in television, and uh, sometimes, oftentimes, they were kind of seen as this uh, sort of this object of obsession, you know, or they were this <laughs> the sexy girl or the maid, you know. And I thought, "Oh my gosh, I want them to see this." this hard professional. news, professional woman who's a critical thinker. Driven. And that was initially, you know, my, what was in my head. And then as I started doing it, I started realizing that it, it wasn't even about someone seeing me and what I look like. And, and that just kind of took a back seat. I started seeing how important it was and the, the important role that we play as the media. You have this mass medium in front of you. You have the power of the television, and now mm -hmm. it's social media too, uh, and this microphone. And I always say people do it one of two things when they see us, reporters. They either run towards you or they run from you. Th that's the truth. They run away from you or they r they're running towards you because they've got something that they want to say. They've got something they want to hide. So your job is to decide you know, is what I'm, I'm going after, is this, is this exp, um, exposing injustices? Mm -hmm. Is this, or am I exploiting someone's pain? And you have to make that judgment for yourself. You have to, as a reporter, um, you know, you, you, you gotta decide and you have to gauge it. And this is where your own personal mm -hmm. ideals and your own personal morals kind of come into play. But my purpose started to slowly change uh, when I saw the very first story that I did where I was able to actually physically see that I was helping someone. Um, the story was about a Hispanic family. They were in Bakersfield. They had no water. We're talking about a mother, a father, uh, a small baby, two families, actually, in mm -hmm. a duplex. Their water had been completely shut off. So at first glance, you know, you, you see the story, and it's like, well, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. Landlord just shut your water off and, and isn't paying the bill. 
So I had to dig a little bit deeper. And I was a new reporter at this. But this is what I did. Um, I saw this family with a hose that they were using from the next door neighbor to flush their toilet, to wash their dishes. I mean, they couldn't even do that. Could you imagine? Dang. And you have a brand new child. And these were hardworking families that were paying their bills. Well, I went to a neighbor's house because they didn't even have a water bill. Their uh, apartment manager was supposed to be paying it. I had to go to a neighbor's house, <laughs> jumped over a fence, almost got hit, uh, bit by a dog, <laughs> knocked on the door and said, I need to see your water bill. I need to know who I need to call. Who is the uh, in charge of this? I called the water department that they were um, that was a part of mm -hmm. that area. And I said, I need to know what's going on. What what? Why has the water been shut off? And they said, well, um, the bill hasn't been paid. The manager, the the People living in that apartment complex are $400 in debt or something, some outrageous number. And I said, are you, you're kidding me, you know. And so I asked the family, are you guys paying your bill? And they said, absolutely. Um, it's included in the price of the home. We've been paying it on time every month. So now this was, this was deep. I had to go, I had to call the apartment manager who was coming out every day. And I, grap I grappled with him <laughs> for a good hour on the phone. I can imagine. And said, you know, you need to, what's going on? I need you to do something, you know. Uh, and he gave me the runaround, whatever. And then I called the water department back and I said, there are families in this home. He said, well, I'll tell you what, I will turn the water back on if you can get that manager to pay. I said, no. <laughs> there are families inside of this home. There are babies in here that are, you know, these are children. This is just... This is wrong. Yeah. I need you to do something. And I know that they need to get paid. This is a, you know, it's a business. Mm -hmm. Everything has to get done. I said, can you at least, if he gives a promise to pay, promises in good faith to make that payment, you come out and turn on the water. He said, the one, I'll do that. And I didn't know this man. I, I, this was just, it's that moment that you kind of push yourself as a journalist. I didn't have to do that. You know, mm -hmm. I, and I had never, see, I didn't know if I was supposed to do that. <laughs> I probably could have gotten in trouble. I don't know. I just I think you knew, did the right thing. I knew in my heart that this mm -hmm. is what hap needed to be done. Something needed you to be done. You told me to go by instinct. You always told go me. Go by instinct. Do what's in your heart. And yeah. I was working with another journalist there from Univision. We were kind of working on the story together. Um, it was, uh, you know, we had in my station, we had a Univision channel there as well. And she sat in the car with me and she says, you know, Luana, sometimes as a reporter, we forget what the story is really all about. Thank you for reminding me. And that almost choked me up because here I am. This is my very first year. I was a horrible reporter. <laughs> I, I kid you not, it was the, the worst. <laughs> and I thought, oh my gosh, did I do something finally right? And here I'm getting this push from a you know, woman who's been doing this for a long time. And they came out, they, they turned the water back on, and the owner, the property manager, made a payment on on that uh, water bill. So that was the very first time I had seen the power that my position held. Not me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, and I don't take any other credit for it. I definitely would say exactly. it's God. God puts you in these positions. He, he knows, you know, everybody has something that they're supposed to be mm -hmm. doing. You have something you're going to be doing. Your mom, your, your, you know, your family. Mm -hmm. And that was my purpose in that moment. So as I continued to do this job, there were those different types of moments. And as I came across them, I hopefully was prepared. Sometimes we miss those opportunities mm -hmm. to give back. We, we miss those opportunities to serve. And there's so many times I say, gosh, I wish I can go back in time and, and really help that woman that I was, you know, interviewing. And, and what if I would have done a little bit more? Time is of the, and yes. Time is of the essence, yeah. <laughs> Say it, like, I don't even know the word right now, but I know it's a man. Yeah. No, but seriously, time is so precious. I mean, time is so precious. It I mean, is. You have to do everything you need to do in the time. I in, mean, in that moment. And if you miss that moment, which, you know, we're all bound to miss them. You know, we, we miss these opportunities, I think, constantly that mm -hmm. come uh, across our path. Tomorrow's a new day. Yeah. Today's a new day. And it's your chance to start over to again. Shine. Yeah. To shine. Yeah. <laughs> what have you learned so far along your life journey? What is the most important thing you have learned? The most important thing? Um, to stay at peace. To really stay at peace. Um, like I said, when I first started, I was not nervous, but I was hustling. 
everything was a hustle. Everything was uh, this constant rat race of running around. <laughs> you know, did you did you get my email? Did you get this? Did you, you know, you're you're just so much more uh, intense and and worried that things aren't going to work out. And you just got to stop and say, you know, there's something higher than me. There's something bigger than me. Than yourself. Than mm -hmm. yourself. It's inside of you. You just got to trust. You know, for most people, That's seeing faith. is believing. Mm -hmm. But for people who are driven by faith, and I don't see how anyone cannot have faith. I, I don't even know how the most atheist um, <laughs> actors and actresses could not have faith. You have to have faith because you can't see it. Your mom pays uh, the electric bill. She, mm -hmm. Can she see the electricity? She's never seen it before. No. Walk by faith, not by sight. But she pays the bill. Mm -hmm. So it's the same concept. You know, you just have to believe that it's going to come when it's supposed to happen, how it's supposed to happen. You, you really don't need mm -hmm. to know the details. Just know that what's supposed to happen will happen. And what are your hopes for your future? My future? Oh, no. The <laughs> no, big because question. You're, 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 you're taking a break right now. Your contract was up, and, you know, that's something yeah. that we talked about. Um, you know, right now, I am really enjoying my family. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying sleeping in. <laughs> I used to wake up at 1.30 in the morning, and, you know, I, I can't wait to get back into that a little break. group. But a nice little break <laughs> is uh, fun, and it's really not even a, a break. I'm doing, uh, you know, other things and I'm taking the time to figure out, you know, what the next step is going to be, mm -hmm. if it's going to be uh, anchoring, if it's going to be reporting, if it's going to be, you know, more than that. We'll see what happens. Um, a lot of little projects or things that are in the works, mm -hmm. but uh, nothing, nothing etched in stone, nothing that I'm sure yet of what I want to happen or, you know, like I said, I just want to <laughs> go with the flow. And it's an important question to ask. Mm -hmm. Certainly, I want to live my purpose, like we've been talking about. I, I want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing mm -hmm. and that not one ounce of my life is wasted. I, I couldn't have said <laughs> any of this better than myself. Uh, no, but I want to know, for my followers, do you have any advice for anybody who is, you know, feeling like maybe they haven't found their purpose or they're kind of struggling with, you know, where am I supposed to go? Who am I supposed to be? Blah, blah, blah. And we have about two minutes left. A oh, minute left. So a minute just left. a couple okay. words, maybe. So how do we say this really quickly? Like I said earlier, um, finding your purpose, don't make that your everyday goal. You, you don't need to figure it out. You just need to give. Find mm -hmm. something that will allow you to just serve, whether it's, you know, taking care of your family, your mother, a neighbor. Give back, and in the process, everything that you need will come to you. Don't stress out. Don't worry about it. You know, drown out the noise. Take some time to yourself, 15 mm -hmm. minutes, 20 minutes every single morning. Spend a little bit of time in prayer or mm -hmm. meditating, doing whatever it is, regardless of what your faith is and just let life flow. Well, I want to thank you for being on Shasta's journey. It means so much to me. Thank you for having and me. And thank you guys for following me along my journey. It means so much to me. And thank you for following me along my path to a purpose. And I hope that Luana's story inspired or healed or taught one of you out there. Please go share your story at www.shastasjourney.com. I'd love to see how you're living out your faith and how you're living out your purpose here on this earth. And go visit us on Facebook and Instagram and whatnot. Anyways, have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Shasta. <laughs>